Steely will lead the line in this one. And of course the two high flyers in the Rodriguez brothers, David and Oturo in the midfield. Silvio Petrescu gets us started for this one as North Texas SC goes on the road, trying to get revenge for their only loss of the season against TFC2 here at the BMO Training Center on the edge of the GTA area. Toronto FC2 in their home red kit with red shorts. Going right to left on your screen, North Texas SC in their white kits and white shorts. Easy opening touch there for Kevin Silva in goal for Toronto FC2. North Texas SC, a team that likes to press high, be aggressive, initiate the game. And in talking to us, Eric Quill, their head coach, talked about in this game, maybe playing it a little different, maybe seeing if TFC2 can step forward and create opportunities in possession, combining a little bit more, rather than giving them opportunities on the counterattack. Long ball over the top here. The counter's on for North Texas. Beautiful defensive recovery from Tariq Mohammed. The left back able to find a way to sneak in between Dante Seeley and the ball and win it back for Toronto. Mohammed in an experienced back line for TFC2. Patrick Bunk Anderson, the Englishman, out, excuse me, the Dane out of Clemson University at center back alongside Jelani Peters. Peters, the Trinidad and Tobago full international, 25 years old. One of the senior members of this group. Jesus West getting the start at the other fullback position for Toronto FC2. West coming off a successful U20 World Cup appearance with the Panamanian U20 national team. They got out of their group round of 16 matchup against Ukraine and West started all four of those games. Rodriguez sees the flag go up against him. For a North Texas SC, that whistle and that flag, a bit of a theme in their last matchup, 14 offside called against this North Texas SC side, just two for Toronto FC. As you see Seeley there, slowing down off his first touch, allowing Mohammed to recover a little bit. And you can see the power of the wind here at BMO Training Center, allowing Silva to take that goal kick. And it ran all the way through to a goal kick on the far side. But for this North Texas side, felt like maybe they were a little too direct with their runs in that first matchup leading to those 14 offsides. Trying to work on curling their runs a little bit more, finding the space along the back line before breaking through on that ball. And you see here from North Texas, even with them getting caught in possession for the first goal, excuse me, the second goal in the last game, they're still gonna try and play out of their two center mids deep in that midfield in Jada and Almaguer. For TFC2. Two guys sitting in front and trying to shield that back line. The captain, Adolfo Ovalle, a young Chilean youth international, will sit in that defensive role. Will be partnered by Matt Serbel as well as Luca Petrasso. And then the rest of the attack for this team and Jacob Schaffelberg, who has been phenomenal here in USL League One action. Griffin Dorsey, who's got three assists to lead the team. And Jordan Peruzzo. Huge opportunity coming up here for North Texas. It'll be Otoro Rodriguez standing over this one, the low dipping free kick safely into the arms there of Silva. Kevin Silva getting the start in goal here. His sixth start of USL League One action. 
21 year old out of Bethlehem, Pennsylvania. On loan this year with TFC2 from Hearts in Scotland, one of the biggest clubs in Scotland. And a young American player trying to find some games which can be so tough for young goalkeepers. Chance on the counter now. Schaffelberg, 1v1, gets the cross in. And it's knocked away. Safe defending on the backside from Callum Montgomery. Montgomery. Starting at center back in this one, partnering Breck Evans. Who we mentioned returning from his injuries for his fifth appearance here of the season. Starting fullbacks for this North Texas side. That man, Kevin Bonilla, an academy player on one wing. And Jonathan Gomez, an academy player at left back. Jada and Almaguer in the deep lying midfield spots. The Rodriguez brothers, as, red, as well as Ronaldo Demis. Across that attacking three, Demis that goal and assist last time they played here at BMO Training Ground. And Dante Seeley leading the line up top. Scored his first professional goal and had two assists in their last game against Richmond on the road. Maybe the best performance of the season for North Texas SC. Eric Quill said it was because of the loss here at the BMO training ground that this team had a different level of focus going into that Richmond game. The question now is can they carry that over from the Richmond game here to try and get a little revenge against North Texas, excuse me, against TFC2. Petrescu cleaning some things up on the top of the box, corner kick coming. Headed away by Montgomery. Battle now to clear their lines. Seeley can't win it. Schaffelberg with space, and his shot just wide of the near post. That young man does not need a lot of time or space to take an attempt on goal. Jacob Schaffelberg, one of the best goals of the season already on the road against forward Madison earlier in the year. When he plays, he scores. Schaffelberg just wide there. He's got two goals and three assists. As part of the USL team, was the USL player of the week, coming off that victory against North Texas SC in week 10. He is one to keep an eye on in this game and in his career. from North Texas, but knocking around the back here. Trying to draw this TFC2 squad out a little bit. TFC2, the shape and style of their pressure, so key in this game. As for them, coming out of the last game, Michael Rabaska, their head coach, said we won 3-2, but we did not feel like we were the better team, especially some issues defensively that he is looking for this group to clean up. They were phenomenal over the weekend in a 3-0 win against Lansing Ignite. As Seeley sneaks in again here, Damus for the second time in two weeks, scores against TFC2. And North Texas SC takes an early lead on the road. Ronaldo Damas sees red. He knows what to do. His second goal against TFC2 of the season. His fourth goal of the year. And the young Haitian puts his team into the lead. Beautiful long goal from Jada. To set that play up as there was Heavy contact off the ball here. And the first yellow card of the game coming. It'll be Dante Seeley and Tariq Mohammed to pick up those yellow cards. And a new league. One team in their first year of existence in North Texas, TFC2 moving leagues. And 
yet we've already got a rivalry here as these two teams do not like each other. It has become quite clear over their short interactions. You see Mohammed there. Felt like he got tripped by Dante Seeley, the push off the ball. And both players punished for that one. So our first yellow cards of this game. The last time these two teams matched up, five yellow cards shown between the two sides. So now Mohammed and Seeley will have to be careful for the rest of this one. Midfield here, Rodriguez comes away with it. And Seeley once again has some space. Gonna get to his left foot to get a shot away. And it's finally cleared by Ovalle. Serbles there. Pass intercepted by Evans. But right now, this TFC2 backline, which Coach Robosco had said they were worried about coming out of the last matchup, has been Swiss cheese to open up this game been lanes down the middle of the field and space out wide for North Texas when they get in possession. Long switch to the field and that one will float out over 500 middle school and elementary school kids at this game from eight different schools. GTA area. Toronto FC2 had to start their season on the road. Their first seven games of 2019 on the road as they finished up their stadium as Mohammed is down back behind the plate once again. Silvio Petrescu over to talk to his assistant referees. We already saw Mohammed and Seeley get involved in a little altercation off the ball early in this game. For this TFC2 squad, first seven games on the road. They have come back now. They have won all three home games, outscoring opponents seven to two here at the BMO training ground. They have shot up the standings now, currently sitting in third place. But really starting to find their feet, some consistency. They felt in the back line. It has been a struggle early on here defensively for TFC2. So Mohammed being looked at by the trainer. Looks like he will be good to continue to play in this one. Mohammed. Mohammed talking to his head coach there. That goal to seal it against North Texas SC was his first career professional soccer goal in his second year with TFC2. He has been an outstanding member for this team all year, three time. USL League One Team of the Week. Mainstay in the Canadian Youth National Teams as well, as are a number of these TFC2 players. For North, Te North Texas SC, some young Mexican internationals, as well as a host of US Youth Internationals. A full international in Bissane Bukuth with the Haitian National Team for the Gold Cup. So a big loss for this team and the other big loss for North Texas SC coming into this game. Ricardo Pepe, not with this group. This one comes wide here for Seeley to take. He will start later tonight for FC Dallas against OKC Energy in the US Open Cup. His debut appearance on a short-term loan with the MLS side. That game on ESPN Plus as every US Open Cup game Coming up tonight, and the rest of the tournament will be on ESPN+. Plus. We already had a phenomenal day of action last night. New England Revolution, a 3-2 win in, in extra time against New York Red Bulls on the road. St. Louis FC upsetting the Chicago Fire. 
taking the first MLS scalp for USL championship side, and then a stunning sixth goal game to close out the night. Sacramento Republic falling to the San Jose Earthquakes. And some phenomenal action still coming up later today. And all of that for you on ESPN Plus. And of course, every USL Championship and USL League One game on here as well. There's soccer left and right. So we appreciate you all joining us in between your World Cup viewing. An opportunity to see especially on the field here today, some of the stars of tomorrow. When you look at some of the best players coming through in the CONCACAF region, Paxton Pomichol, Jesus Ferreira, and of course, Weston McKinney, who will feature for the U.S. national team in the Gold Cup this summer, all coming through the FC Dallas Academy. When you look at Toronto FC too, young players like Liam Frazier, who got the start in central midfield for TFC in MLS action. Starting off for TFC2, his young pro career, Io Akinyole, and players like that that have come through. Two of the best academies in the CONCACAF region in producing young players. Silva blasts it long. Dorsey chasing that one, and he's not able to keep it in. Griffin Dorsey in his first year in Toronto out of Indiana University. Three assists already on the season young American attacker. TFC 2 Since the goal has settled down a little, Almaguer can't keep possession there, and now TFC 2 back on the ball. Collision deep in the corner there. The home side will win the throw in. Griffin Dorsey, one of the best athletes coming out of the 2019 MLS Super Draft. A guy who can beat players with speed and run all day. He started the first TFC game in his career right out the gates in CCL action against Kai has settled in with TFC2 over the course of the season, getting eight starts. Foul here from Ovalle on Jada, but you saw the space and time for Jada on the opening goal for Demis to be able to play that ball from deep with no red shirt around him. And so for a player in Ovalle wearing the captain's armband in central midfield, he has to at least Make Jada know that someone is there to put a little more pressure on him when he looks to play out of the back for North Texas. Jada here on the ball once again. And Bonilla coming forward. Academy players with this group to start at fullback. Same academy, of course, that produced Reggie Cannon. Gonna produce two great fullbacks once again, and this Sealy Mohammed 1v1 battle will not end as both of them go down in a heap. No call made. But Silvio Petrescu already showed them a yellow card. Just minutes into this one, really doesn't have a lot of other options if they continue to go after each other in this way to deal with them. Dorsey down the right wing. He's got options in the middle. And that one not able to find Peruzza. You can see the young Italian-Canadian center forward had eyes big as he called for that one on the top of the box. And a foul on TFC2 out the back. But Peruzzo, he had his arms wide. <laughs> there. He knew the opportunity coming for him if he could get that ball in the top of the box and then another foul here on Jada, the young Gambian center midfielder. He has already taken three or four big hits. As I said, TFC2, they have to find a way 
to take some control back in this central midfield battle. It looks like that Manjada, he's gonna be the one who pays for it. Much more comfortable in that central midfield role. It started at center back against TFC2 in the last game with Breck Evans out with that injury. It's a dangerous ball there from Avales. Schaffelberg back on it. He clips this one to the far post and it'll roll out. But Jada back in central midfield looking much more comfortable in this game. His 10th start of the year on loan from MFK Viskov in the Czech third division. New rule instituted by IFAB. You're allowed to play a goal kick to your teammates inside the box, but that will not start until next year. So a restart, but we've already seen it in the U20 World Cup. As it starts to be rolled out around the world, should speed the game up. I do wonder who it will be an advantage to. Whether it's the team playing out of the back, but it could change the way teams press, which has become so prevalent basically all over the world. Seely over the top to Rodriguez. Rodriguez surrounded by two defenders. Bodies go down in the box. Simple play on there as West tries to clip it up the line. Gomez finds the feet of the other Rodriguez brother. Space here to shoot. And Almaguer shot is blocked. And Peruzzo looking for himself on the counter attack. Gomez able to recover and win it back. Select is the official ball supplier of USL League One and many of the finest leagues in the world. Since 1947, Select has been the leader in soccer ball quality and innovation for the latest Select products and special offers please visit SelectSportAmerica.com. Toronto FC2 hosting North Texas SC for the second time in two weeks. The top two scoring teams in USL League One here on ESPN Plus. I'm David Goss joining you for this one. Just some phenomenal talent out there on the field. These two teams already in their short histories. A little bit of rivalry brewing. David Rodriguez there losing possession. Demis trying to get to the end line. And Kevin Silva quick enough to recover off his goal line. David Rodriguez. And the attack, the younger brother of Arturo Rodriguez. So major part of the attacking core for this team. Arturo here in his 10th start, two goals and three assists. David Rodriguez, two goals on the season. Two of the brightest young attacking players in the CONCACAF region, eligible for the US and Mexico. Along with Ricardo Pepe. There'll be some big battles over these players over the next few years over what their national team allegiances will be. And they are worth the work. Beautiful from North Texas SC to play out of their back. Jada goes long once again. Demis can't get that one under control. game when they press forward that is where the openings come 1v1 for North Texas SC to counter quickly Ovalle we've not seen on the ball much most of his work's been defensive in this game Jesus West there pinches in off that fullback spot to 
line in at central midfield. Peters now pushing forward. TFC two getting a nice spell of possession here as the fans get behind them and cheer them on, but the away side wins it back. Demis here. A goal scorer already in this one, looking to set one up, and he finds the back of the net himself. I don't think even Demis will claim the shot there, but he'll take the goal, and man, does this young player love playing in Toronto. Three goals and an assist in two games on the road against TFC2. The ball won back, and Demis there makes the play with that first touch to get around Bunk Anderson, and he was looking for Seeley on the cross. And Silva, trying to anticipate, steps out. And you can hear and see how strong the wind has been. That may have affected that one. But Demis now with two goals on the game. What a performance for the 19 year old out of Inchi, Haiti. And you see how the numbers lay out. North Texas SC, 6 0 0 when scoring first. Demis on a hat trick, and he finishes it. A 27 minute hat trick for Ronaldo Demis. Revenge was the flavor of the day. And the Haitian leading the way for the Texas side. Ronaldo Demis filling in at center forward for Ricardo Pepe, who had a hat trick in the USL League One opener, the only hat trick in USL League One history. And when you are trying to fill in for the Golden Boot leader, this is how you do it. Ronaldo Demis, 27 minutes for a hat trick here in the first half, and TFC two. They have been blown off their feet to open up this game. Saw the vulnerability from the first minute of this game for this TFC2 backline. They have been susceptible, especially with that long ball over the top. We talked about already in this game, they caught North Texas SC offside 14 times in the last game. So often playing a high offside line for that trap. Can be playing on the edge of catastrophe. And it has been that for Michael Robaska and his side here today. Two goals, direct balls over the top from behind the midfield line for North Texas SC. And then the mistake from Silva gifting Demis, the second goal. I don't know if I've ever seen a performance like this. Well, Alex Morgan did score five goals last night for the U.S. women's national team. Well, Rolando, Ronaldo Demis. What a job he has done. And now the question becomes, how high can he go in this one? TFC 2, 3-0-0 all time here at the BMO training ground. Right now, they are facing a massive uphill battle to get back into this one. Schaffelberg's cross. And Jada so calm with the ball at his feet. And he plays it out of the back. Demis once again wins the first battle, this time with Peters. Funk Anderson comes over to help. And Ovalle, but Demis normally playing out on the wing, filling in at center forward for Pepe and looking like an elite center forward and his ability 
to hold up play there and win that first ball. Schaffelberg putting Avales under pressure. And then good sportsmanship between him and Bonilla. I will remind you, TFC2 was leading 2-0 the last time these two teams played in North Texas SC came back to score two goals and tie it up. So we know there's goals in this game. We know how wild this matchup has been already in their short history. We do not expect this team in TFC2 to lay down at all. Trailing here in this first half. Ball down the line. And too easy right now for North Texas SC. As they walk into the box there. The offside flag going up on the far side against Sealy. How simple it was down that left wing. All right now. Toronto FC2 have to find a way to at least slow this attack down and find their feet a little bit. TFC2 has some defensive help on the bench and Dante Campbell and Gideon Waya. They've also got some dangerous attacking players in Tsubasa Endo, Endo and Sean Hundal. TFC2 have never conceded three goals in the first half in USL League One action. An unfortunate record for them to break here today. They've also never lost here at the BMO training ground. Michael Robasca about to learn a whole lot about the mentality of his team. Wanted to take the press off a little bit and play a little deeper in this game. That option's now off the table as he needs to initiate the game and create opportunities for his side. Breck Evans with the long switch of the field under hit. Dorsey can't find a teammate and Montgomery recovers possession. Jada misreads the play there. And you can see Eric Quill talking to his team, I think telling Kevin Bonilla when leading 3-0, maybe no need to go flying forward, be an option in the back to play out through his feet for Jada. Toronto FC2 in their home, red kits and red shorts here at the BMO Training Ground, hosting North Texas SC for the second time in two weeks. It was one of the best performances of the season for TFC2 in their last matchup. A 3-2 win here at home against North Texas SC, but it has been the opposite as the away side and their all-white kits have come out and quite honestly wiped the floor with TFC2. Ronaldo Demis, a 10th minute goal, a 26th minute goal, and then following it right up with a 27th minute goal to seal a hat trick here in the first half. Eric Quill has to be delighted with the result his team's seen, but another dangerous bad giveaway out of the back. Schaffelberg here gets the cross away. Dorsey on the far side, it's saved, still alive and over the crossbar. Serbel and Perusa colliding at the top of the six. And Serbel furious there as he felt like he had a tap in coming. Once again, as we saw in the last matchup, a turnover trying to play out of the back from that center midfield spot for North Texas, creates an opportunity. Dorsey has the first chance saved, and it looked like Serbo was gonna put that one in before Perusa collided with him. Serbo clearly calling him off on that ball, but so tough for a goal scorer like Perusa to not try and make that aggressive move towards the ball when it's alive in the box and the goalkeeper's out of position. 
Morrissey still without a goal here. 2019 USL League One action. Leads the team with three assists. A lot more expected from him on the scoreboard. His five goals and five assists last year for Indiana University. Good for second team All-American in college soccer as IU went to the College Cup or falling in the final to Maryland. Dorsey, along with Justin Rennix, linking up as one of the most dangerous attacks in the country. And of course, the play of Andrew Gutman, the Mac Herman Trophy winner. We're here from TFC2. Baruta goes wide for Schaffelberg. The Nova Scotia native, cornered by three white jerseys. Schaffelberg keeps possession, gets the cross away. Fantastic take in the end from Avales. Going back along his line to see it, to secure that one. Off the head there of Peruzza. Right there from Arturo Rodriguez. And Arturo Rodriguez knocks over a TFC two player off the ball. Tariq Mohammed has been involved all game. He's already been shown a yellow card for battling with Dante Seeley. This one right in front of the fourth official. And it looks like the foul will go against Arturo Rodriguez on this one. He might be fortunate not to see a card on top of that. Mohammed frustrated with his teammates here as he wants to restart play quickly. TFC2 have a lot of work left to do. And right now for North Texas, this is one of those moments where you have to understand as a professional what's required of you. You want to have that fire. You want to have that fight in your team. But leading 3-0, the last thing, the worst thing you could possibly do is be sent off for an unnecessary play off the ball and put your team in a dangerous spot defensively. Jada here, a chance to lead the break. Direct ball on the ground. It sneaks all the way through for Rodriguez and he lines up the shot and blasts it over. Atua Rodriguez, a golden opportunity, but how does a ball like that find its way on the ground through the entire TFC2 team, breaking two lines as Peters comes over to cover. Right now, TFC2 losing the midfield battle, forcing their back line to scramble here in this opening half, the worst defensive half of the season for Toronto FC2. Buck Anderson able to win that one on the ground. Mohamed here, he's had a lot of action off the ball. He would love to get involved more here on the ball. Rodriguez eventually wins it, but the whistle goes just moments before from Silvio Petrescu. Petrescu, one of the legendary refereeing names, has experienced a center referee as you're gonna get around the US and Canadian soccer circles. Onside here for Serbel. Lays it back for Schaffelberg. First time ball floated in. And Avales reads that one and comes out and takes it cleanly once again. Carlos Avales has shut the door every time it looks slightly ajar here. The 20 year old out of Dallas, Texas. One of the reasons this North Texas SC team was created for players like Avales, who was originally signed to a USL deal with OKC Energy, but never appeared for their team, training with FC Dallas as an OKC Energy player. And for an FC Dallas club that is producing a quantity and quality of youth players, they needed a new avenue to get players experience, to get them playing time and challenge them at a higher level. North Texas SC squad has done that here in 2019. And now you see a pipeline for the players like David Rodriguez and Jonathan Gomez. 
Nicholas Carrera, who's on the bench here today, as well as Breck Evans, to take their first steps in the professional game. And continue moving on. As Peters heads that one away. TFC2 squad from Luca Petra Petrasso, who has been entirely too quiet here in this game. Everything good that's happened for TFC2 has come down this left wing with Schaffelberg. His pass deflected, can't find Mohammed. And now North Texas bravely trying to play out of the back. A mistake, Schaffelberg gets it back. Shooting space here, it's blocked down by Montgomery. And Petrasso's second shot goes wide. Petrasso, the opportunities you dream of coming in on that ball on the top of the box with the goal at his mercy. After North Texas, maybe trying to do a little too much playing out of that corner. Schaffelberg finds Petrasso. The shot knocked down off Caleb Montgomery. Otherwise, Avalez was gonna have to step up and make a big save there. TFC two, just one shot on goal so far in this game. They will need to ramp up that attack, especially in the second half. For Coach Quill, you gotta wonder what the ideas are for halftime. You would think coming into this game with Serbel and Petrasso playing as two higher midfielders in front of Ovalle, that would be enough to put pressure on Jada and Almaguer as they try and play out of the back. That has not been the case so right now. Excuse me, Robaska has to find a way to get numbers in that midfield and start to win that battle a little bit more. When they have pressed and gotten around Jada and Almaguer, they've been able to create a couple turnovers, which we saw in the last game and this game have been so dangerous. Petrasso goes wide for Mohamed. Mohamed playing much higher here in the closing minutes of this first half. Schaffelberg to the far post, it's knocked down Dorsey and Peruzza collide, and Peruzza's shot is blocked. West keeps it alive. Mohammed can't keep possession. And now a chance for North Texas to go the other way as bodies go to ground. Mohammed cuts it back. Space here for Peruzza. He gets by the goalkeeper. Dorsey puts it in. And Griffin Dorsey. Not offside, he gets his first career TFC two goal, and he starts to help his team work back from this three goal deficit. Tariq Mohammed has been active and involved all game, playing higher here, wins back possession, Immediately on the attack, this beautiful ball clipped inside. Montgomery loses the battle to Peruzza. And if it wasn't Dorsey, it was probably gonna be Peruzza. And Griffin Dorsey finally gets that first goal of his professional soccer career. The TFC to a lifeline here late in the first half. I said in the last game, TFC2 took a two goal lead. And North Texas was able to come back and tie it 2 2 before falling 3 2. Their only loss of their entire franchise's existence. They came out as a team on a mission here. A first half hat trick from Ronaldo Demis has gotten them ahead, but TFC2. Starting to find their feet here in the final moments of this first half. 
slip there from Peters. He's still able to get the ball for Eric Quill going into halftime. He's gonna have to find the balance with his team. It's just natural, they'll have to defend and protect this lead as Toronto throws numbers forward. They can't be stuck defending for the final 45 minutes of this game, or they won't be able to get out of this one with the win. Have to find their moments to get on the ball, find Jada, get him some space to start to pull the strings a little bit and get some numbers forward for North Texas. Stoppage time of this one here at the BMO training ground. Two minutes of stoppage time. Over 500 elementary and middle school kids out to watch this game. You see deep in that corner some of the TFC MLS side alongside the field to watch their teammates battle along here. It was a rough first half, a 27 minute hat trick for Ronaldo Demis. 17 minutes between his first and third goal, scoring in the 26th and 27th minute here in this first half. The jump all over TFC2. Toronto found their feet a little bit more here. That 44th minute goal from Griffin Dorsey gives them the lifeline to try and come all the way back in the second half. We knew we'd see goals. The top two scoring teams in USL League One facing off a 3-2 game the last time these two teams faced off. We have been treated to a special one here. Four goals in 45 minutes as the wind roll through, rolls through here on a beautiful sunny afternoon at the BMO training ground. David Goss on the call here on ESPN Plus. I've seen some fantastic play from some of the best players in the USL. As we get our final whistle here. Ronaldo Demis filling in for the Golden Boot leader at center forward in Ricardo Pepe. And he may have made that spot. Experienced players on this roster. And when you need goals, he's the man you're gonna go to. Had eight goals last year in USL championship action for TFC2. Their sub Franco Ramos coming on. He comes on in place of Jelani Peters, who just looked a step off, and a lot of it not his fault. As this back line was completely exposed in the first half. We'll see what TFC2 tries to do. Will not be surprised to see a formation change coming up here for TFC2 as they try and get some more numbers forward. So Endo comes on as a like-for-like -like change for Petrasso. See the confirmation there as Jelani Peters goes off. Peters with all those injuries that he has had to deal with in his short career. Wasn't able to make a single appearance last year due to injuries after coming over on loan from West Connection. Only appeared three times in 2017. But the talent is there in TFC2. Trying to find a way to nurture it. This man, Tsubasa Endo, spending time with both the MLS and USL side in Toronto, out of the University of Maryland, former Japanese youth international. Endo signed up last year for USL action in the middle of the season and made a difference immediately as he tries to do here. And that last touch, just not there. Well, this Toronto FC2 squad, Jordan Peruzza. He's gotten some half opportunities to fall to him. He created the goal for Dorsey as Endo coming on the field with energy. And Peruzza, players on the ground around him just could not find that final touch. Now North Texas breaking through once again, Rodriguez. He had the corner picked out, but read that time by Silva. 
And Arturo Rodriguez has had two beautiful opportunities to put the final nail in the coffin. And he has not been able to find the finish in the first half. He broke into the box, put one over the crossbar this time, set up by his brother. It's the right idea. He gets his foot around that ball, trying to wrap it into that far post. Not enough power on it and not far enough over to make it tough for Kevin Silva. Jada has been the maestro in this game from this deep lying midfield position. The tall, lanky Gambian has found so much success. And you could see, even in how he plays the relief, not having to play center back anymore. And the addition of Breck Evans, so key because of his individual quality, but also what it allows to push Jada higher up the field into his more comfortable position as well. The offside flag goes up against Sealy there on the far side. And Jada has been the difference maker in this game in that central midfield. If anyone can be called a difference maker when someone scores a 27 minute hat trick, Dorsey's cut back blocked. Endo here, and another cross blocked, and it'll be a corner kick coming, or excuse me, a throw in for TFC2. Subasa Endo making his fifth appearance of the year for TFC2. 25 year old out of Maryland. He's been a part of the Toronto FC club setup since 2016 when he got drafted ninth out of Maryland. Scored two goals on his MLS debut for TFC against the New York Red Bulls. He spent the bulk of the last three years with this TFC2 group. Ovalle sprays that one wide. Serbel and Mohamed linking up. Good things have happened when Mohammed has gotten forward from that left back spot, scored against North Texas in the last matchup, helped set up the lone goal so far in this one. Schaffelberg to the top of the box, Endo whiffs on the shot, and then North Texas able to regain possession. Nicole Schaffelberg has been the hub of creativity along that left wing for TFC. Nova Scotia native has been phenomenal here all season with TFC2. I'll force to defend a little bit. You can see Toronto defending a little deeper in a more compact group here in this second half. Trying to close down some of the lines that North, Te North Texas so easily exploited in the first half. In. Second ball won here by David Rodriguez and his long shot. Just did not have the bend to sneak into that far post. Fans follow TFC2 and the rest of USL League One all season long on ESPN Plus. Home to USL, MLS, UFC, the US Open Cup, and more. Join the over 2 million sports fans who have already discovered ESPN Plus and watch League One every week. Sign up today at ESPNplus.com. You've got Copa America coming up on ESPN Plus starting Friday night. The host Brazil hosting Bolivia in that opening game. As my producer says, our Copa runneth over. I would never say that, so I had to quote him there. But you've got soccer from dawn till dusk right now across the globe. U.S. Open Cup action coming up tonight on ESPN Plus. Some great rivalries, some great matches. Louisville City facing off against FC Cincinnati. 
for the first time this year after Cincinnati moved to Major League Soccer as Dorsey breaks into the box. Flips that one up towards the near post, saved by Avalez. It'll be a corner kick. Dorsey, an apology there to his teammate. I don't think he was trying to sneak one into the near post. He was looking for a teammate, but he forced Avalez into what has become a rare save in this game. Every defender knows Dorsey's speed, so Gomez has to give a little respect there. Create some space for Dorsey to make that decision. And now it'll be Mohammed to take this corner kick. The left foot put in. Header won by Evans. Endo there pressed into the mistake. Demis is flying. He's got a three on one if he hurries here. Sitting on a hat trick. He squares it. A recovery. And TFC 2 stay alive. Ronaldo Demis, not a guy you would say is normally too patient or lacks aggression in attacking moments. He's got a hat trick in this one, but just took his time a little bit too much. Not a great angle. It allowed Bunk Anderson to recover for that one, made it quite obvious what Demis was going to do. And Bunk Anderson there going for broke with that tackle in the box. Texas has the possession now. North Texas has had three or four chances to break the spirit of this TFC2 squad. They haven't done it in games like this. You always wonder if those chances will come back to haunt you as a team. Demis able to earn a corner kick there for his squad. see the North Texas substitutes warming up along that end line. Some dangerous players on the bench and Johan Gomez as well as Tanner Tessman. Good center back in Nicholas Carrera as well. We'll see which way Coach Quill chooses to go. Does not have Ricardo Pepe in his team. The Golden Boot leader will start tonight in Open Cup play against OKC Energy for FC Dallas, but it has not been a problem for this North Texas SC squad. As Ronaldo Demis, like for like change at center forward, has a hat trick already in this one. Biku Bizanth as well, missing for North Texas SC. He is in the Haitian Gold Cup squad. And if Ronaldo Demis continues to play this way, you got to think he won't be far behind in the Haitian national team call-ups. He's already got two appearances for the full Haitian national team at just 19 years old. Started and went the full 90 in a World Cup qualifier against Costa Rica. A 1-0 loss. Haiti looks to bring through their next generation of players. Continuing to build that program up. They will play in Group B in this Gold Cup. A huge opportunity for them. No Mexico, no U.S. in their group. They'll play their first game in Costa Rica to open up group stage play for Haiti to make a name for themselves, get out of the group and see if they can do any damage in the knockout rounds. Right now, Demis has done the damage for North Texas SC. Xavier Rodriguez winning possession back. Now Gomez, his brother Johan on the bench. Could see him later today. Gomez not able to keep possession there. Jonathan Gomez, when he flies forward from that left back position, you can see a player who can be a starter at the pro level for a number of years to come. A potential future dream for 
FC Dallas of Reggie Cannon and Jonathan Gomez bombing forward from the fullback positions. Reggie Cannon coming through the FC Dallas Academy on his way to US Gold Cup camp today. Almaguer will lay off this one for Arturo Rodriguez. Born in San Luis Potosi, Mexico. Just 20 years old. On the strings for this North Texas side alongside his brother David. Two of the bright attacking players on the soccer scene. The Buck Anderson swapping over to the left back, left center back spot for Jelani Peters. This man now flying forward in Franco Ramos. Chance to counter now. And Demis in an offside position. If you're looking for the latest USL League One news and content, you can follow at USL League One on Twitter, Facebook, and Instagram for exclusive access and updates at USL League One. Just the first year for the USL League One. A big win in Open Cup play as forward Madison knocked off El Paso Locomotive on the road to move on to the next round fell in a dramatic loss at St. Louis FC in the third round of the Open Cup. Forward Madison going full Mingo, been a fun addition to this league. As Dorsey clips this one to the far post, headed down on the far post, and it's controlled by Bonilla. What a performance in this game so far from Mohammed. And now Demas flying down the field, the save by Silva. End to end action here at the BMO training grounds. Two of the best teams in the league, the two highest scoring teams in USL League One. Going blow for blow here out of the halftime whistle. Griffin Dorsey finding much more success here in the second half after his late goal to close out the first half of action. That's an offside flag going up there on Demis. Dorsey finding more space down this right wing. Tsubasa Endo has been a shot of energy for this team. And Dorsey, we've seen a couple times here Try and stand this ball up on the far post. Mohammed flying forward and then right on the other side, Demis. He just has an ability by himself with the ball at his feet to create a counter attack. He had no help on that play and just beats Bunk Anderson for speed from the midfield line. And this time Kevin Silva maybe making up for the goal. He gave up the second one to Silva. So it looks like Johan Gomez will come on to join his brother, Jonathan Gomez. And he will come on for Dante Seeley. Johan Gomez now his fifth appearance here. Second off the bench for North Texas. He got one goal on the season, the older brother of Jonathan Gomez. Johan right now committed to the University of Portland for college soccer if he chooses to go that route, but now with North, Te North Texas SC. An opportunity to play at the pro level already. On loan from the FC Dallas Academy. So two sets of brothers on the field for North Texas. For Dante Seeley, an assist in this one. Of all the attacking players, maybe his performance going a little bit under the radar but a good game here for Dante Seeley. Miscommunication, mistiming there from that North Texas attack. And you see Gomez here. It looks like he will slide in at center forward, his more natural position, and Demis will move 
to the right side, which you can understand, trying to get some fresh legs on the field. And Demis here doing the defensive work. And I don't know if you really want to take that guy any farther away from goal than he has to be. You can see the idea of the two brothers. They've practiced that. They've done it a million times in their backyard. David Rodriguez looking for the scoop to his older brother, Aturo, who just did not make the run. Bunk Anderson up the line. Schaffelberg dropping deep. Puts a long ball over the top. And you can see the wind blowing from behind that North Texas goal. It was actually an advantage for North Texas in the first half. That wind killing the long balls a little bit before they could get to Silva's box, allowing Seeley and Demis to run onto the end of them. But you'd expect in this second half for North Texas' back line to play a little deeper with this two goal lead. Great work there for North Texas to win possession back. Almaguer, a big missing piece in the previous matchup here when TFC2 knocked off North Texas two weeks ago. Was not avail available for that game. You see what he brings when he gets back in there as Demis clattered down by Mohammed, and then Mohammed stands over him. He's had an eventful game. Yellow cards shown to him and Dante Seeley for an interaction in the 10th minute. He got knocked down by Arturo Rodriguez off the ball later in that first half, and now going head to head with Demis, moved out wide. They both go to ground, and you see Mohammed hop up on his feet and have something to say. Great fight in his game from Tariq Mohammed, the 19-year-old out of Scarborough, Ontario. He had the seal and goal in the win against North Texas last game. His first career pro soccer goal. You can see why he has been a key part of the Canadian youth setups over the last few years. Joining them for U17 World Cup qualifying last year and U18 World Cup qualifying as well. Another corner kick opportunity coming for North Texas as you see that win blowing against them. It'll be David Rodriguez to take it. Curls it into the top of the six. Dangerous opportunity. And fortunate maybe for TFC2 to see Franco Ramos get his foot on the end of that one. You can see Nicholas Carrera getting ready to come on here. Out of the FC Dallas Academy as well, an Academy loan player. A true leader and ball winner at the center back position. And we'll see if it's a third center back coming on here for Eric Quill. And it sounds like it'll be a sub for Breck Evans. So a like for like change. Evans, of course, his first game back from injury in over five games. He gets about 65, 70 minutes under his belt. A composed 70 minutes for one of the stars of this North Texas side. And he will have the chance now to watch from the sideline. So a good return performance for Breck Evans, wearing the captain's armband, which he should be trading off to someone. And comes on the young Mexican center back. Nicolas Carrera, just 17 years old out of Pachuca, Mexico, makes his debut for North Texas SC, his professional soccer debut. A player that the FC Dallas setup is very high on. They believe he's got a future as a leader at that center back position. He's finally able to make his debut for North Texas SC here on the road. 
beautiful opportunity there for Johan Gomez, which he cannot wrap his foot around and puts over the crossbar. Schaffelberg now back the other way. He'll put Carrera under some early pressure. Ball played in, still alive. Dorsey on the far post. He'll play it back to the top of the box. West into the feet of Dorsey. And it gets knocked out. So Jesus West, starting this game at right back now, has pinched in and basically in possession, played as a second center mid leaving three at the back for Toronto as they try and push numbers forward. Dorsey floats this one in. Schaffelberg with some space. Can he save it from going out? He does. No power or touch on that shot there from the center back, Bunk Anderson. And now, who else but Ronaldo Demis leading the attack the other way. One on one, what a tackle there from Serbel. Now TFC going the other way. Early shot there from Peruzza. And the offside flag goes up against the young Italian-Canadian. What a game we have been treated to here. As these two teams have gone all out in this one and we have seen some incredible plays and so much talent on display. up the field what a turn from Rodriguez on West and now all that space vacated as West stepped in there he's fortunate to see that one fall back to a red jersey and Endo has to be quick Gomez comes all the way back he's able to win that one ball over the top and Silva I'm not sure if it'd make it into his box using his feet and the wind holding that one up. So now Mohammed can stretch his legs going forward. Big switch from Mohammed. Dorsey now into the box. Cuts it back quickly for Endo. Endo looking for space. Back to the feet of Dorsey. He's got the lone goal in this one for TFC2. West now flying forward. Acres of space for him. Wide for Endo, trying to get by Montgomery, still alive off the deflection, and taken by Avales. It was good patience from Toronto FC2 to pull that ball back out off the initial attack. Work it back for West, and you see here Arturo Rodriguez overplaying that ball down the wing, as does Jada. West able to fly in, maybe played that pass a little too early for Endo. Didn't make Montgomery commit either way. And that made it too tough for Endo to cut infield and get a shot away. TFC two, 20 minutes left, enough time for them to put on the pressure. If they can get that second goal, they can really make things tight for North Texas. Jada has had the second half you'd expect. Less time on the ball, but he's done some work defensively for this team as he slips there. Serbel up the line for Schaffelberg. Schaffelberg with two defenders around him. Carrera able to win it back for his team. What a play there from Carrera. Making his professional debut here in a tough environment on the road. And we're gonna have a yellow card shown back behind the play. It'll be Jesus West to pick up this one. Just the second yellow card of the game, Silvio Petrescu points back to the far side of the field, so he allowed play on on the advantage for North Texas. It came back to show the card. You gotta say that's fantastic refereeing. You don't kill the flow of the game but you still punish the player for what they did. Silvio Petrescu, one of the most experienced referees in pro. Doing a great job here today. Gomez to Gomez there, but it's knocked away from Johan Gomez. North Texas in no rush to take this one. Again, the 
two brothers linking up there. A miscommunication, Dorsey now flying the other way. Ball played through here. Opportunity for Toronto and Serbel gets the goal for the second time against North Texas and this TFC2 squad showing their poise and metal. They go down 3-0 and now they've got the lead down to one. Lost ball there from Johan Gomez. Dorsey's been aggressive all game, and Peruzza this time doesn't call his own number. Immediately puts that ball through for Serbel, and what composure from the center mid. His second goal of the year, the first one coming just two weeks ago against this same North Texas squad. He's got his team back within one, and we are game on here at the BMO training ground. Beautiful Toronto afternoon for soccer. Over 500 young kids in attendance, being treated to a good one. Five goals already. Dorsey trying to make it six. He goes down, and no call made. You could see for Dorsey, it was going to be tough for him to get it under control. A little bit of contact with that arm from behind. And Griffin Dorsey was always going to go down on that play. And the question was if Petrescu would make the call right on top of the box. He plays way, he waves play on. And right now, we are going to learn a lot about Eric Quill's side and how they handle the pressure here. They were cruising in the first half. Now they're on their heels. Who else but Mohammed charging through? He cuts back. He's got numbers around him. He'll go wide for Schaffelberg. Now Mohammed puts one in the box and Avalez comes out to take it. And he goes long here. And that is not the decision that Eric Quill wants to see from his goalkeeper as right now North Texas, they need to get some composure and get some possession. The last thing you want is your goalkeeper with your line stretched to try and go long you have got one player up the field by himself. So it sounds like North Texas is about to make their final substitution. It's going to be Tanner Tessman coming on for David Rodriguez. Tessman, a little more work defensively, a little more size for set pieces defensively as well than David Rodriguez. Tessman has played absolutely everywhere in his young FC Dallas career through the academy. And the first team, he's played wing, he's played center mid, he's played center forward. Expect him to go in at center mid here. As the chance come up for TFC, the Toronto side try and claw all the way back here in front of their home crowd. They trailed 3-0 in 27 minutes on the verge of tying it. Endo's shot is blocked. What a block by Jonathan Gomez. Nuvasa Endo did everything right. Clips that ball up to himself to hit it off the half volley from inside the box. It's a dream setup for Endo and Gomez closes quickly to make the play. You see David Rodriguez now walking off the field young attacking player in the starting lineup alongside his brother. Didn't have to do a whole lot as Demis led the attack. Rodriguez did a good job connecting play when he had to. And now you get the size, combative ability of Tessman on the field. The USU 18 international. Endo to the near post, Jada heads it down. Tessman immediately gets his first touch. Shown his composure, playing out of his own box. Ball clipped over the top, onside here. It looked like for Arturo Rodriguez who goes down in a heap. Holding his head now back behind the play. We'll see, Silvio Petrescu chooses to stop play at any point and now he will ask TFC 
two to put that ball out. Rodriguez felt like he got fouled. Not sure if there's too much of an injury, but it was a dangerous ball over the top from Bonilla. And Rodriguez now goes down holding his head. What a game we have been treated to. Ronaldo Demis. A first half hat trick. 17 minutes between his first goal and his second goal. He scored in the 26th and 27th minute to cap off his goal, his hat trick, in place of Ricardo Pepe, the golden boot leader. You see there the collision between West and Rodriguez. And awkward there for Rodriguez going down with West on his back. Griffin Dorsey scored in the 44th minute. A lifeline, a shot of energy for this TFC2 squad to go into halftime with some belief. They came out, they have played a much better second half here in this game. They were out possessed in the first half, 53-47. They've now flipped that possession battle here in the second half. 53-47 in favor of TFC in the first half. Eight shots, now 12 total shots for their team. And a 73rd minute goal from Matt Serbel. This man here has given them an opportunity right on the line. The question is, do they have one more in them? About 10 minutes to go here at the BMO training ground. David Goss on the call with you on ESPN Plus. USL League One action, two of the top three teams in the league, the top two scoring teams going head to head as Endo's corner is easily headed away by Montgomery. Ovalle keeps it in, now Jesus West with some space. Looking for the feet of a teammate. Dorsey has just gotten better since he scored that goal and he earns a free kick in a dangerous area here Mistake from the UNC Charlotte graduate, Callum Montgomery. Avales now will have to organize his back line. Good size with Tessman and Carrera coming off the bench to help defend these set pieces for North Texas. Of course, the size of Jada and Callum Montgomery will be a factor. TFC two have been hurt by set pieces over the last few weeks, conceding two off corner kicks to Chattanooga. Can they make it work for them here? It's Mohammed and Endo. Mohammed will play it in and Jada heads it away. No one on the end of that one, a mistake here. Ovale. Goes down in a heap. Demis trying to run away. And there'll be a card coming here for Serbel, who had no choice to try and keep Demis under control. Ovalle there going down, whether an injury or embarrassment on that moment. It's one of the threats when you push numbers forward on a set piece ever. That last man with pressure on him, he loses it. To break the other way. We have seen the one man counterattack that is Ronaldo Demis in this one. As Ovalle goes down, we asked the question already. You had Arturo Rodriguez with two golden opportunities one in the first half, one in the second, and Ronaldo Demis with a golden goal scoring opportunity here in the second half. You can't ask for him to do much more after scoring three goals in the first but you wondered when it happened would those opportunities come back to haunt them for North Texas SC they just left enough on the table for TFC to to believe they could come back in this game the goal from Dorsey the goal from Serbel and right now Toronto on the edge of what would be a phenomenal comeback against the league leading side.
fans, the USL unveiled its elite youth platform, USL Academy. This allows clubs at all levels across the USL to develop its local youth and compete at the highest level across the United States, including the USL Academy Cup. For more information, visit uslsoccer.com forward slash academy. These two academies in FC Dallas and Toronto FC, two of the best in the CONCACAF region. They have shown that in youth competition. They have shown that in their professional player development. And now the USL getting involved in heavy numbers. We've already seen the success of academies like San Antonio, as well as North Carolina FC, producing players at the pro level for their first teams and pro teams around the world. And now USL League One and USL Championship gonna become a major part of the future of soccer in the US and Canada. Almost snuck through there for Almaguer. And now Tessman can feel a little bit of the energies come out of this TFC2 squad here. Over these last few minutes, they'll have to find another gear as Montgomery puts that one out due to injury. Another Toronto player down. Back behind the play. Man Griffin Dorsey, his first career pro soccer goal. Second team All-American out of Indiana University. Top 10 draft pick for, for TFC. The 2019 Super Draft, so much hope on his shoulders for the career he had in college as well as with the US U-20s in World Cup qualifying. And you can see for Toronto FC, they are ready to make this substitution as Sean Hundle comes on. And it looks like it's in place of Jordan Peruza. Not the afternoon Peruza would have liked to have had the leading goal scorer on this team with four goals on the year. Came back from some concussion injuries over the weekend against the Lansing Ignite. Excuse me, getting confirmation now. It's Ovalle coming off, not Peruzza. Peruzza, so Peruzza stays on as you'd expect. That goal scoring strength. Ovalle comes off with that injury we saw him go down with just a few moments ago. We hope for the best for him. And so now Sean Hundle, who's returned from a loan to the Ottawa Fury with two goals in two games for this TFC2 squad. He has come back with a vengeance, the 19-year-old out of Brampton. And he do it once again for this Toronto side. Two goals and three assists last year for TFC2. Was their leading scorer in 2017. This now his fourth year at the pro level. Good young attacking player. One of the lockdown starters for Canada's youth national teams. And the tackle there from Gomez. Judged a little too late by Petrescu. A quickly taken free kick there by Endo. Final five minutes or so of this one. David Goss with you on ESPN Plus. Toronto FC 2 hosting the league leaders in North Texas SC. They served them their only loss in their franchise's history two weeks ago on this ground. North Texas came out for vengeance. A first half hat trick by Ronaldo Demis put them up 3-0 and slowly Toronto have chipped away since then. The question is, do they have enough to get a result out of this one? Can they get one more and get over the line? Silva all the way out of goal. Comley plays it to the feet of Mohamed who's been one of the star performers for Toronto so far. Ruza now on the ball. Back for Serbel. 
Serve will close down by Tessman. Goes wide for Schaffelberg. Schaffelberg to the end line. His ball clipped in. Carrera wins the first header. What a bite kick attempt. Avalez off his line, coming out for that cross. And Toronto FC2 almost break through here. Tariq Mohammed has had a phenomenal game, but that would have been more than a cherry on top if it found the corner. An incredible attempt from the left back. Avales, fortunate to get up quick enough to make that save and now down with an injury. North Texas, they've made all three of their subs. So Avalez will have to continue, otherwise someone in field would have to play in goal. Avalez there limping a little, but seems fine to continue on. What a attempt from Mohammed. Avalez robbing him of that one. Outside of North Texas as C fans, you could say robbing all of us an opportunity to see that goal, but North Texas fans will love what they're seeing. We thought this would be a clash of the Titans in USL League One. Two teams sitting at the top of the table. TFC two in third place. North Texas in first. It has been everything we hoped for. Played in by West. And we are hearing it'll be five minutes minimum of stoppage time. As the red jerseys go forward here, their fans have tried to urge them on all game. They went behind early, a 10th minute goal from Demis. But they have fought back heroically in this one. Do they have enough to get over the line? It'll be Dorsey to take. Everyone forward now for North Texas. Dorsey clips it in towards the top of the box. Endo was covered there though. And now Mohammed with Carrera on his heels and another free kick coming up for the home side. Toronto's gotta get some bodies in the box and put Avalez under some pressure here. They've made it too easy off set pieces throughout this game for North Texas to defend. It'll be Endo and Mohammed over this one. Mohammed's left foot, Endo's right foot. Three in the wall. So you have to think this is a cross coming up here for Toronto. Endo's right footed ball played in. It's knocked on. Avales makes the save. He didn't come off his line. It took a deflection. Not a lot of time to recover. Avalez steps up once again late here to keep his side ahead. Endo to take this corner. Toronto pouring on the pressure. That header goes back out, but only as far as Griffin Dorsey. Dorsey with white shirts around him, gets it down the line. Endo's cross put in, alive in the box, and it finds the corner! The slow roller, it finds the net, and Franco Ramos Mingo, Brett CFC2, all the way back to tie it in stoppage time. What a performance from this home side. They came out flat. They were back behind by three in just 27 minutes. Since that moment, they have fought and clawed and scraped. It's not perfect from Michael Robaska's side, but he's gonna be proud of what they've done. And the substitute, Franco Ramos, gets his first goal of the season. The 
Argentine native, his first goal in Toronto colors, and what a big one it was. I talked about going into halftime, North Texas finding the balance between defending with that lead and continuing to put TFC2 under pressure. They could not defend for 45 minutes and stay in this one. They've had some chances on the attack, but they have given way too much possession and opportunity to TFC in this second half. And Toronto, the 44th minute goal from Dorsey, the 73rd minute goal from Cerebral, and the 92nd minute goal from Franco Ramos on what was the fifth set piece attempt in those last few minutes. And finally, Endo finds the defender for the goal. Was there one more twist left in this one? The last time these two teams faced off, it was 3-2. Now we got 3-3. So we're in for seven, eight goals coming up. The next time these two teams play, what a treat this one has been here on ESPN+. Plus. Ronaldo Demis, his hat trick will almost be forgotten for a moment, as incredible as it was, with those two goals just a minute apart. And then TFC, too, in front of their fans, dragging themselves back into this one, having the composure to continue to create opportunities. Don't forget the incredible tackle that Bunk Anderson made midway through this second half when it looked like an easy goal for North Texas to make it 4-1. All those moments have kept this Toronto side alive. As you see the coaching staff and first team along that end line watching these young players battle it out. And what a show they put on. Silva looking to go quickly. Mohammed's under pressure immediately. Montgomery following him. Mohammed able to get around Montgomery, charging forward and can't find the feet there of Hundal. Tariq Mohammed, what a display from him. The starting left back for Toronto FC and what a game we had. TFC two trailing 3-0 in the 27th minute at home looking like they're gonna fall to the league leaders at